My name is Katie Merringer, and I'm an Associate Director in Medical Affairs with Otsuka Pharmaceutical Development and Commercialization. And I'm so pleased to be here with Dr. Herman Hernandez, a practicing nephrologist from El Paso, Texas. This video is part of a Frequently Asked Question series where we'll discuss important topics about the management of autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, or ADPKD. Dr. Hernandez, will you take a moment to introduce yourself? Hello, thank you for having me. I'm so glad to be here today. My name is Germán Hernández. I'm an adult nephrologist practicing in El Paso, Texas, where we take care of a large number of patients with ADPKD. I've also managed patients that have gone as far as getting a kidney transplant. Thank you so much for being here today. Today's objective is to answer a frequently asked question. What is the risk versus benefit profile of GenRQ treatment in older patients? We'll discuss the efficacy outcomes of GenRQ from a retrospective pooled 2.4 year analysis in patients aged 56 to 65 years. Dr. Hernandez, before we talk about the data in older patients from the retrospective study, can you walk us through the data from the pivotal reprise trial, including what we found in the older patient population? Sure, Katie, but before I respond to that, let me go over the indication and box warning for GenRQ. GenRQ is indicated to slow kidney function decline in adults at risk of rapidly progressing autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease or ADPKD. GenRQ tolvaptan can cause serious and potentially fatal liver injury. Acute liver failure requiring liver transplantation has been reported. Measure transaminases, ALT, AST, and bilirubin before initiating treatment at two weeks and four weeks after initiation, and then monthly for the first 18 months and every three months thereafter. Prompt action in response to laboratory abnormalities, signs, or symptoms indicative of hepatic injury can mitigate but not eliminate the risk of serious hepatotoxicity. Because of the risk of serious liver injury, GenRQ is available only through a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy program called the GenRQ REMS program. So, GenRQ, as you know, is the first and the only treatment approved in the US for the treatment of patients at risk of rapidly progressive ADPKD, which is autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease. Most of the data are based on two important pivotal trials, TEMPO34 and REPRISE. These trials included more than 2,800 patients and demonstrated that GenRQ slowed the decline in kidney function and the progression of kidney disease across CKD stages one through four. So let me explain the reprise study. As the treated older population I will talk about later comes from the reprise study. Reprise was a 12 month study in more advanced kidney disease stages two through four. The primary endpoint was changes in the EGFR comparing pretreatment baseline with post-treatment. So in the reprise study, GenRQ slowed the estimated GFR decline in patients with ADPKD over 12 months, which included patients with CKD late stage two to early stage four. In the randomized period, the change in estimated GFR from pre-treatment baseline to post-treatment follow-up was a drop of 2.3 milliliters per minute per year with GenRQ compared with a larger drop of 3.6 milliliters per minute per year in those treated with placebo, corresponding to a treatment effect of 1.3 milliliters per minute per year, or a 35% reduction in the decline in kidney function compared with placebo. I'd also like to review a little bit of the data from older patients in the reprise study. In the reprise study, a subgroup analysis of patients aged over 55 was performed, and in this population, the treatment effect of GenRQ was not observed. There were about 200 patients, 96 in the tovaptan group and 94 in the placebo group, that fit that age category in a study that included 1,370 patients with ADPKD. This relatively small number may explain the observed lack of treatment effect in this older population. These results, however, should be viewed in the context of the relatively slow rate of progression of disease in patients that are older and on placebo in this study. So for example, the drop in EGFR was 2.34 milliliters per minute 
in those that were age 55 or older compared with 4.6 milliliters per minute in those that were younger. There was also a relatively short duration of follow-up of one year. In both Tempo 3-4 and Reprise studies, the most common adverse reactions observed with GenarQ with an incidence greater than 10% and at least twice compared with that of placebo were thirst, polyuria, nocturia, polyacuria, and polydipsia. The Reprise trial employed a five-week single-blind titration and run-in period for GenarQ prior to the randomized double-blind period. During the GenarQ titration and run-in period, 126 or 8.4 percent of the 1,496 patients discontinued the study. 52 or 3.5 percent were due to aqua erratic effects and 10 or 0.7 percent were due to liver test findings. Because of this run-in design, the average reaction rates observed during the randomized period are not described. In the two double-blind placebo-controlled trials, ALT elevations greater than three times the upper limit of normal were observed at an increased frequency with GenarQ compared with placebo, 4.9% or 80 out of 1,637 patients versus 1.1% or 13 out of 1,166 patients respectively within the first 18 months after initiating treatment and increases usually resolved within one to four months after discontinuing the drug. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. Let us now transition to talking about the data from the retrospective pooled long-term analysis. Can you please discuss the data in older patients from that analysis? And based on that data, what was the impact of GenRQ in patients above the age of 55 with ADPKD? Having put that into perspective, now we can talk about the retrospective pooled longitudinal analysis in older patients. So this looked at the clinical benefit of GenarQ in patients aged 56 or older. The analysis pulled data from 11 different studies. It was a post hoc subgroup analysis and it basically aimed to assess the effect of GenarQ compared with standard of care on kidney function in older patients. Subjects on GenarQ from reprise were matched one to one with subjects on standard of care from the HALT PKD and Overture studies based on baseline CKD stage, gender, age, and estimated GFR. And then the annual rate of change in eGFR was estimated using the CKD epi equation. Basically, all patients were the same in regard to these characteristics at baseline. The analysis focused on 95 individuals who were on average 60.2 years of age and between 56 and 65 years of age. Looking at baseline characteristics, 46% of patients were men. About two-thirds had CKD stage 3 and one-third had CKD stage 4. Data across studies were linked longitudinally to allow follow-up for over 2.4 years. The study estimated the rate of change of eGFR per year in an analytical model that considered several variables such as treatment, time, eGFR at baseline, and time by treatment interaction. Again, the mean duration of GenarQ exposure was 2.4 years, with a mean gap of 29 days between reprise and the extension study. The data showed a treatment effect of GenarQ, estimating a reduction in the annual rate of eGFR decline by 1.66 milliliters per minute over the 2.4 year period. Dr. Hernandez, thank you so much for summarizing the data from both the reprise trial and the pooled analysis in patients greater than age 55. Dr. Hernandez, which older patients with ADPKD would you consider treating with GenRQ? So Katie, like I mentioned uh, before, the data from the retrospective longitudinal analysis do support the rationale for treatment with GenRQ in the older patient population, particularly in those aged 56 to 65. However, Healthcare professionals should confirm risk of rapid progression in patients over 55 years old when considering them for treatment with GenarQ, even in the presence of a reduced eGFR. The full prescribing information for GenarQ does not specify a lower eGFR limit for eligible patients, but use of the medication 
is contraindicated in patients with anuria. Thank you for sharing that. I couldn't agree with you more that it's imperative that patients are identified as being at risk of rapid disease progression before initiating GenRQ therapy, even in this population. It's important to emphasize that the decision to initiate treatment requires the consideration of many factors besides eligibility. One must consider contraindications and potential adverse events, as well as the patient's motivation and lifestyle factors. That is, it requires a shared decision-making process with the patient. Do you think that there's an upper age limit for treatment with GenRQ? Katie, if you look at the full prescribing information for GenRQ, there is no upper age limit. But effective GenRQ in patients aged 56 to 65 years was estimated in the retrospective pooled 2.4 year analysis. Thank you, Dr. Hernandez. I'm sure that question comes up a lot and I appreciate you sharing that there's no upper age limit per the approved prescribing information. Dr. Hernandez, what does the scientific community say about the length of time you should continue GenRQ in older patients? U.S. expert opinion suggests that therapy with GenRQ may be continued until reaching the need for kidney replacement therapy, regardless of age. That's definitely an important point, and I appreciate you sharing that information with us as well. As you mentioned, these data estimate the effect of treatment with GenRQ in patients above the age of 55. I also want to take a moment and thank Dr. Hernandez for being here today. Your expertise in this topic is truly appreciated, and I look forward to having another discussion with you in the future. To view additional topics in this FAQ series, please visit www.genrqhcp.com resources. Let's now review the important safety information for GenRQ. Indication and important safety information for GenRQ, Tolvaptan. Indication. GenRQ is indicated to slow kidney function decline in adults at risk of rapidly progressing autosomal dominant polycystic kidney disease, ADPKD. Important safety information. Warning, risk of serious liver injury. GenRQ, Tolvaptan, can cause serious and potentially fatal liver injury. Acute liver failure requiring liver transplantation has been reported. Measure transaminases, ALT, AST, and bilirubin before initiating treatment at two weeks and four weeks after initiation, then monthly for the first 18 months and every three months thereafter. Prompt action in response to laboratory abnormalities, signs, or symptoms indicative of hepatic injury can mitigate but not eliminate the risk of serious hepatotoxicity. Because of the risks of serious liver injury, GenRQ is available only through a risk evaluation and mitigation strategy program called the GenRQ REMS program. Contraindications. History, signs or symptoms of significant liver impairment or injury. This contraindication does not apply to uncomplicated polycystic liver disease. Taking strong CYP3A inhibitors. With uncorrected abnormal blood sodium concentrations unable to sense or respond to thirst, hypovolemia, hypersensitivity, e.g. anaphylaxis, rash, to GenRQ or any component of the product, uncorrected urinary outflow obstruction, anuria, serious liver injury. GenRQ can cause serious and potentially fatal liver injury. Acute liver failure requiring liver transplantation has been reported in the post-marketing ADPKD experience. Discontinuation in response to laboratory abnormalities or signs or symptoms of liver injury, such as fatigue, anorexia, nausea, right upper abdominal discomfort, vomiting, fever, rash, pruritus, icterus, dark urine, or jaundice, can reduce the risk of severe hepatotoxicity. To reduce the risk of significant or irreversible liver injury, assess ALT, AST, and bilirubin prior to initiating GenRQ at two weeks and four weeks after initiation, then monthly for 18 months and every three months thereafter. Hypernatremia, dehydration, and hypovolemia. GenRQ therapy increases free water clearance, which can lead to dehydration, hypovolemia, and hypernatremia. Instruct patients to drink water when thirsty and throughout the day and night if awake. Monitor for weight loss, tachycardia, and hypotension because they may signal dehydration. Ensure abnormalities in sodium concentrations are corrected 
before initiating therapy. If serum sodium increases above normal, or the patient becomes hypovolemic or dehydrated, and fluid intake cannot be increased, suspend GenarQ until serum sodium, hydration status, and volume status parameters are within the normal range. Inhibitors of CYP3A. Concomitant use of GenarQ with drugs that are moderate or strong CYP3A inhibitors, e.g. ketoconazole, itraconazole, lopinavir-ritonavir, indinavir-ritonavir, ritonavir, and conavaptan, increases tolvaptan exposure. Use with strong CYP3A inhibitors is contraindicated. Dose reduction of GenarQ is recommended for patients taking moderate CYP3A inhibitors. Patients should avoid grapefruit juice beverages while taking GenarQ. Adverse reactions. Most common observed adverse reactions with GenarQ, incidents greater than 10% and at least twice that for placebo, were thirst, polyuria, nocturia, polyuria, and polydipsia. Other drug interactions. Strong CYP3A inducers. Co-administration with strong CYP3A inducers reduces exposure to GenarQ. Avoid concomitant use of GenarQ with strong CYP3A inducers. V2 receptor agonist. Tolvaptan interferes with the V2 agonist activity of desmopressin, DDAVP. Avoid concomitant use of GenarQ with a V2 agonist. Pregnancy and lactation. Based on animal data, GenarQ may cause fetal harm. In general, GenarQ should be discontinued during pregnancy. Advise women not to breastfeed during treatment with GenarQ. To report suspected adverse reactions, contact Atsuka America Pharmaceutical Incorporated at 1-800-438-9927 or FDA at 1-800-FDA-1088 www.fda.gov slash medwatch. Please see full prescribing information, including boxed warning. Available on this platform or at this presentation.